hearty welcome to all of you at Mad Medicine. This time the topic is family, so let's be quick with it. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you what all we are going to cover. The first is the introduction, the definition. Number two, we need to discuss about the family cycle. Number three, that what are the functions of a family. And number four, we need to discuss about the types of families. So starting with the definition of family. As a family is something so integral to us, I hope we all come from a family and uh, we are still a part of it and we have been living and growing up like everything, our personality, our cultural beliefs, our political beliefs, everything is shaped by the family we belong to. So therefore, we need to know that what a family is. It is two or more people who are living together and they may be related by blood or by marriage or by adoption. You can also say that a family is uh, where two or more biologically related people live together and eat from a common kitchen. So those were the definitions and to know that it is a very basic and it is uh, the smallest and the most intimate unit of a society. So family can act as a cultural unit, a social unit, an epidemiological unit for uh, social research and everything, right? So it's a very basic and fundamental unit of society. And we need to know there are various features of a family. It's universal. It has an emotional basis. It has a limited size that causes the family members to be very well related to each other. And there is a formative influence of the elders over the family. There is a responsibility sharing and there is a social regulation. So these are various unique features of a family. Now coming to the family cycle, right? A family cycle, you need to remember that there are six phases. Okay, first the phases and then we discuss about each one of them. So the first phase is formation, F, formation. The second, they are related to expansion. So one is early expansion, then late expansion. Then opposite of that is contraction. So early contraction and late contraction. And finally is the dissolution of the family. So just remember the six landmarks that I'm giving you and listen carefully. The first thing will be the marriage. It starts with the marriage of the couple, right? So marriage number two will be first child is born. Then last child is born. Then the first child leaves home. Then the last child has left home. And finally, the death of the first spouse. So what will be expansion between the two landmarks? The time period between the marriage up to the birth of the first child. What will be early expansion from the birth of first child to the birth of the last child? So on like that you can do. And what will be dissolution from the death of the first spouse to the finally the death of the survivor, right? So that is a family cycle. It rotates like that. And so a family is also transitory in nature. Now we need to discuss the third important part and that is the functions that are rendered by a family. So here also is a very easy trick. Two R, two S, D and E. What is R and R? The first R is reproduction and bringing up. Second R is residence. Then S, socialization. S, social care. D, division of labor. E, the economic component. So first, let's start quickly with reproduction. Of course, the basic function is reproduction. The we need to study from you in the earlier classes that yeah, that is important for the perpetuation of species and for the passing on the genetic uh, pool, right? So that is important to reproduction and the bringing up of children. So usually the males, they are associated with them, ensuring that the children, they learn the religious beliefs, the cultural customs, the traditions of family and female. She's also related with the early education of the child, the formal, the non-formal education. And she also always has a role to be vigilant what the child is doing, to be counseling the child, to see that he's taking proper nutrition, to take care of the child when he develops, say, any sickness or even in health. So these are related to reproduction and bringing up and taking care. Now, the second R was related to residence. So residence is the place where you live. So it should be a clean and decent home. In the West, the couple, they leave the parental home. In the East, it is the opposite. And according to the residence, it could be a Patri local or a patri local or a new local, right? Now, SS is socialization. It's so important for the child to see that the child develops socialization over time as he lives in his family so that he can fit in the society and he can be the bright future of tomorrow. So socialization, uh, the, uh, the family system helps to bridge the gap between the generations. They help to pass on the cultural patterns, the way a child eats, the way he has his behavior, his attitude, the way he maintains his personal hygiene, the speech, the language. Everything is related to the socialization that the parents do for the children so that they can also become worthy members of society. Then comes the social care. Now, social care has five small little, little concepts. So don't worry. We'll just go with all the five in a flow. First is the social care. That means it has to be giving you something rewarding. So it gives you a name. Your family gives you your name, your identity. Sometimes you may be related and you may say that I'm a direct descendant of so and so royal dynasty. So it gives you your name, right? The status. Number two, it helps you. It protects you from any defamation from outside. Number three, it regulates the marital activities. The family can help you. They can guide you. They can counsel you to choose your spouse and they help to take the ceremonies, the, mar the marriage ceremonies and all that, right? Uh, then the next, they help to regulate the sexual behavior. They see that even today we see incest is usually abhorrent and it is not considered to be legal and right in most societies. So they have to regulate the sexual behaviors and the sexual relationships of the members. Apart from that, the family also helps to regulate your certain religious, your certain political beliefs. It is also a part of the family to ensure that you have a creation. And finally, it's a very important stress relieving unit, right? A family, though it is the smallest unit of society, but it's the strongest unit of society, which can together tide over any crisis, right? So these were the family, uh, the function of the family. So quick revision. First is reproduction, bringing up all that stuff. What will mother do? What will father do? The second is residence should be clean and major local, patriarchal, all that. Then we need to uh, see the socialization. The child learns his cultural beliefs, religious part, eating, talking, behavior, learning, everything. The socialization aspect. The Social care. It has five small, small concepts to now we are done. This is uh, the status. The first, your status. The second is related to it protects you from any defamation. Number three, it uh, helps you in the marital activities. Number four, regulates the sexual behaviors. And number five, the religion, the recreation, the stress, burn, uh, the stress relieving, and all that. Right now, D and E. So D is the division of labor. It is all the family. So 
you know that all the members of the family, since they enjoy certain privileges, they also have to take responsibility for the day-to-day -day activities of their family. So division of labor, usually uh, in the primitive societies, it was a concept that the male used to be the breadwinner of the family and the female was the homemaker. But uh, nowadays in the modern industrialized societies, we see that there is no distinctive line of marking and there's a lot of sharing of their responsibilities. And today now there is a concept coming up of communal families where each and every member of the family is considered equal. They can take part in the decisions of the family, the property, the owning, the financial matters, and even the household chores, etc. And E is the economic component, so there has to be a breadwinner of the family. So earlier it was just males who were earning, nowadays both male and female, we see they're working, both the parents, they're working these days. And the economic component, the family together, it has uh, this owns, like it can own any property, it can, own, it can own any farm, any shop, any land. And then the inheritance part, that from the parents, everything, the inheritance is passed on to the progeny. So that is the economic component, the earning, and then giving to the kids, that is inheritance, right? So that was the function of the family done. And now what is the last part that is left? And that is very simple also. So that is the classification of family. See, classification can be done on the basis of five things, five right? M-O-R-A-D, MORAD. So M stands for on the basis of marriage. O is organization, R is residence, A is authority, and D is descent, right? Marriage, organization, and then R is related to uh, the residence, then A is related to authority, and D is your descent. So first of all, is marriage. Based on the marriage, what can you think? It could be a monogamous or a polygamous family. In polygamous, it could be polygynous or polyandrous. Polygynous, many females, that means one husband to many females. That is polyandrous, many males, that means one wife is having many husbands, right? So that is on the basis of marriage. Two, organization. Now, this is the most important classification. It could be one nuclear family, two, joint or extended family. And C, it could be the third generation family. So do you know what is the concept? First, I will tell the basic concepts of all three of them. And then there is more explanation needed, especially in the joint family. So a nuclear family is the, mar uh, the married couple with or without children. That's a joint family or extended family where we have various nuclear families living together. Right now, that's it. And the third generation is family. It says that the married couple, they, with or without their children, they still live in their parental house because maybe they cannot own right, uh, right uh, because of economic conditions or whatever, they cannot own a house of their own. So they have shifted or they're living in the parents' house. So the parents, their children, they're, they're living there. And these children, of course, they're married. Not, see, third generation, you know, it's simple that usually we say in the West, what I said, the married couple leaves the parental house. But if it does not leave the parental house and this couple has a child of their own, so the three generations are living under one roof. So that is a third generation family. Not to be confused with the joint family. So now, first little bit of nuclear family and then joint family. So nuclear family may, uh, like there would be certain subdivisions of nuclear family, like it could be a supplemented nuclear family, where the basic nuclear family setup plus one more relative is living, he or she may be a divorced relative or a widowed one or separated one or unmarried one, whatever. It could be a sub-nuclear family where the nuclear family had the mother and the father, so one of them has died and a single parent or a single person household where just one single person is living. Now coming to joint or extended family, it could be a vertically joint or extended family or a horizontally extended family. So vertically extended family, you know, it is related to the extension of the parent-child relationship, right? Parent, child, their children, they're living like that in a vertically fashion, in a vertical fashion, they're joined together. Whereas a horizontally jointed family, it is the two or more brothers with their families, they are living together. So this vertical family relationship or a horizontal one, so horizontal the joint family can be called also a collateral or a fraternal family, right? Whereas this one can be called a patriarchal or matriarchal joint family, Okay. Now, which is advantages? What do you say? Which is better, nuclear or joint? Which is better? See, nuclear is better because there is more intimacy between the husband-wife relationship. But joint family is better in the sense that there is a lot of sharing of responsibilities and all the things like the responsibilities, everything is divided. There is a lot of division of labor. Okay. Uh, now, you need to know certain important characteristic features of a joint family. A joint family is having, uh, say, if it is a uh, patriarchal family. So the, uh, the head of the family, the male head of the family, he's in charge of all the authority. He is over the financial authority. He also presides over the rituals and the rights of the family. And any important decision has to be taken by uh, taking his consultation. And if he says, then it's fine. If he says no, then it cannot be taken. So he's an authority of the entire family. The family shares all the property together. So there is a common uh, concept of common property, a concept of common purse of the family. Okay, so everything is being shared. Okay, and usually the wife of this person, she is uh, in charge of usually having a controlling authority over the female members of the family. So who are the female members of such a family the, all the male members they are related by blood and the female members are their wives or widows or their unmarried daughters okay now in the matriarchal it would be the opposite the female has more authority fine so we discussed about all the features of a joint family system whether what are the advantages and what are not the advantages and what are the type of joint family a vertically joint family or it could be horizontal joint family that's a collateral family okay so we have done joint family also third generation that's all about the uh, we told you that how can you uh, classify First, on the basis of marriage, we discuss polygamous or monogamous. Then on the basis of O, MO, O for organization, it could be nuclear family, joint family, or a third generation family. Now, RAD, R is standing for residence. So it could be matrilocal or patrilocal. Okay, A, A stands for authority. So who's in charge, patriarchal or matriarchal? So can you give us examples of family which are matriarchal in origin? These are two examples. One of them, they are um, 
the Khasi tribes of Assam and the second one they are the Nayars of Kerala. So both examples are of India because joint family system also is prevalent only in few pockets of the world these days such as in India, the Far East, the Middle East and certain uh, countries of Africa. Okay, so a matriarchal society where female is responsible for all the decisions and she has all the authority. You need to remember there are two tribes, one is of Assam, the Khasi tribe of Assam and the Nayar tribes of Kerala. Okay, uh, and D that is on the basis of descent, it could be patrilineal or it could be matrilineal. So I think that was